Alrighty guys, well, welcome to the video. So today what I wanted to do is go over a specific topic that can be really uh, useful for you guys when you're trying to apply certain tweaks in your system. And the main reason that I want to make this video is that this is something that is very subtle and it's something that you may not realize is actually happening with your system, especially if you're doing a lot of different tweaks. And so what this is, is essentially there's a feature in your CPU known as clock stretching, which happens essentially when your CPU is unable to hit the actual advertised frequency that you're trying to actually achieve. And so it's smart enough to know that it's not going to be able to hit that, but it isn't able to do very much about it. And so it ends up throttling that CPU's effective clock, which the difference between the effective clock and the regular clock is the effective clock is essentially the measurement of how accurate it is that your system is running at that advertised performance. And so if your effective clock is really low, but your regular clocks are really high, then that's essentially a discrepancy where it's saying essentially that it's not actually running at that frequency, which is why if you're using, for example, idle states, the effective clock will be at almost zero or like a hundred, like something stupid low. And then when you're actually running a stress test, it'll go up to like what the advertised frequency should be. And so I essentially was trying to um, capture this and essentially explain it in a way. And so I ended up actually finding it happen in one of the stress tests that I was running. And so in this video, you'll notice that I'm running uh, Prime 95 with a blend of all of the FFTs. And essentially what's gonna happen is that as we run the stress test and we turn everything on, the CPU clock ratio, like it ends up actually, the effective clock ends up matching the actual clocks that are running once the system gets into full load. But then after a couple of seconds, once the load starts to really ramp up, you'll notice that our effective clocks on some of our cores are significantly lower. Like for example, on core nine and core 10 and core one, our effective clock is almost 1300 megahertz lower than the actual advertised frequency that we're supposed to be hitting. And this essentially is what clock stretching is. But you'll notice that in a lot of benchmarks, you can pass them but you actually will get worse performance or you'll notice that you won't get any errors, but your system just doesn't feel actually very responsive. And so this essentially is something that can be happening when you aren't actually aware of it because this essentially is something that isn't always apparent is happening in the background. And so this is why I recommend that you guys, when you're stress testing, make sure that you're testing all elements of the system, not just, you know, all the fact that it passed or it didn't error or I'm not blue screening because yeah, you might be able to get past that stress test, but in the middle of a game or in the middle of, of a different test that you're running, you might immediately have a horrific effective clock drop, and then you're going to get uh, something like a stutter or something that'll interrupt your performance. And so that's essentially why I made this guide is so that way you guys can be informed on that sort of problem. And the best way to fix this type of thing is obviously to either dial back the frequency or up the voltage or something in a way in which reduces the actual um, stress on the actual system trying to actually hit those advertised clock speeds. And so, yeah, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. And the main thing I also wanted to say is that it will also over time run at a normal speed after a couple of seconds. So clock stretching isn't always permanent. It may not always be running 100% of the time at exactly, you know, significantly lower numbers. For example, on core one and then core nine, they'll catch up around to the regular performance that they should be because clock stretching is a measurement and it's essentially what happens when it's unable to hit it at certain points. I've got it some points where it's been able to be stuck at like 1500 megahertz, but that has been when it's almost unstable to the point of barely even being able to run the stress test at all. And so you can be in that sweet spot area where your system is not crashing, but it's not actually getting the advertised performance. And so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Um, please like, comment, subscribe, favorite, do all that fun stuff. And hopefully you guys enjoyed this type of content so you can be more informed about it. Anyway, guys, I hope you have a good one. My name is Sabaterix and I'm out.